Let's get all caught up with some of the day's top stories, headlines. Again, my name is Pilar Arias. So glad that you are here with us. How was Extra? What was your favorite story from 10 a.m. to noon? Don't forget, too, while well, we're streaming on YouTube, because there's currently 171 of you watching, we're also on television, Fox 10 Extra. That's Channel 45, Cable 9. So what are you up to today? What are your plans for this weekend? Feel free to let me know. Meanwhile, Doug Luzader is here to get us all caught up on Jeff Sessions firing back at the president. Well, this relationship between President Trump and Attorney General Jeff Sessions has been souring for months and months, but it may be nearing a breaking point. I told Donald Trump we need to make America great again. There was a time when President Trump had no more loyal supporter. Now it's Trump versus Sessions. I said, what kind of a man is this? The president is seething way, still. It's been almost a year and a half since Jeff Sessions recused himself from the Russia probe because of his role in the Trump campaign, and the president it's hasn't very, forgotten. Very Jeff Sessions recused himself, which he shouldn't have done, or he should have told me. Even my enemies say that Jeff Sessions should have told you that he was going to recuse himself, and then you wouldn't have put him in. And that finally prompted a response from Sessions. While I am attorney general, the actions of the Department of Justice will not be improperly influenced by political considerations. I demand the highest standards, and where they are not met, I take action. So will Sessions be fired and replaced by someone who might try to rein in special counsel Robert Mueller? The problem the president faces is the Senate, which would have to confirm a replacement in a highly charged atmosphere during an election year. And some Republicans think it would send a terrible message. And the idea that Jeff Sessions might be fired because he's not a political hack is a very, very bad idea. It's a bad idea for the Constitution. It's, the, it's a bad idea for public trust. It's a bad idea for the Department of Justice. And frankly, it's a really bad idea for the President of the United States. And to make this relationship even more awkward, after all of this played out yesterday, Jeff Sessions actually went to the White House to meet with President Trump to talk about prison reform. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. All right, someone just said on the YouTube chat that they're going to the beach this weekend. I'm a little bit jealous. Feel free to say which one you're going to. Is it a popular tourist spot or is it a local beach? I'd like to know, right? Need to get to know uh, where you guys like to travel to. All right, this next story is about your cash. Any millennials out there watching, can I get some hands up emojis? I like emoji responses to questions. Okay, so who, if there are any millennials out there, who are you most likely to ask to borrow money from? And why do you ask to borrow that money? That's what this next story is about. If you have the money, then give it, but don't loan it. Uh, it comes with stipulations and it can ruin relationships. A study from creditloan.com shows millennials are more likely to ask family members to borrow money. I'm not surprised millennials are going to their parents. These are the adults that they know that most likely have money. Millennials are more likely to ask for help with debt compared to Generation X and baby boomers. $13,000 is the tipping point for millennials to reach out for help. Fifteen and a half thousand dollars for Gen Xers and around nineteen thousand dollars is the breaking point for baby boomers. What I want mom and dad to do is to be very clear about where they are and what they can afford to do. You can't give something you don't have. According to the study, millennials are 12 percent more likely to ask for mom's financial help over dad's. They're also 59 percent more likely to accept money for basic necessities and more than twice as likely to borrow money for a vacation compared to baby boomers. Be honest with your young person, but more importantly, let's teach them some skills. Budgeting, attacking debt and getting focus. That life skill will help them more than that two to three hundred dollars in the moment. After all, it's your cash. Tracy Carrasco, Fox Business. All right, Tracy, thanks so much for that. I know there's more than one millennial out there watching on the stream right now. There's currently 177 of you, but only one hands up emoji when I asked how many were out there. <laughs> All right, everyone, this next story, your health, talking about how life expectancy has decreased in some countries. A life expectancy is dropping in high-income countries around the world. Two new studies in the journal BMJ suggest the decline is driven in part by the effects of the opioid epidemic in the United States and disease outbreaks among older adults in other nations. Researchers say this data highlights a need for high-income countries to invest more in preventing disease outbreaks and also do more to address persistent social and health issues. 
daily e-cigarette use can nearly double the risk of a heart attack. Researchers gathered data on nearly 70,000 U.S. residents who were interviewed about their e-cigarette and tobacco use compared to those who never used an e-cig. People who did had nearly double the risk of having a heart attack, and if they used both e-cigs and traditional ones, that risk went even higher. The findings published in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine do have one bright spot. Once e-cig users stopped, their heart attack risk dropped. And finally, if you walk to get in your physical activity, you can get even healthier by just picking up the pace. Australian researchers wanted to see if walking speeds, not just steps, influence any health benefits. Discovering people who picked up the pace had a 20% lower risk of death during the nine-year follow-up period. Those benefits coming from lower heart-related deaths. With your health, I'm Andrew Kraft, Fox News. So I have always heard that as long as you do some sort of physical activity, it's better than nothing, right? But supposedly you can burn the same amount of calories walking as you can jogging or running. You just have to walk further. You know what I mean? Like longer distances. So say you do a mile jog, well, you'd have to walk like, I don't know, two or three miles in order to make up the same amount of burning calories. Do you guys do any sort of activity? I, I like to be outdoors when I do physical activity. I like to bike, I like to hike, I like to walk, I like to jog. I never call it running because I'm never that fast. <laughs> Even though I've done some 5Ks. By the way, update on the millennial count on the YouTube chat. I have three hands up emojis now, so thank you for that. This next story I have for you, I feel like it's something that we hear all the time. An ATM stolen with a forklift. Did it look like... Donna Wilhelm is an esthetician at Unique Skin, a spa just around the corner from the Combined Federal Credit Union. I don't know if I have one of that exact one. She was shocked to hear that a man stole the entire ATM from the credit union early Thursday morning using a forklift. That's just a small credit union. You wouldn't think that anybody would target it. So I'm really surprised. Hot Springs police say the suspect, who is seen on surveillance, stole the forklift from a nearby work site. He went to the bank, pulled the ATM out using the forklift, and put it in a stolen U-Haul truck standing by, then drove off before police arrived. One of the witnesses went to go see what the commotion was, realized what was going on, went back to call. But in that time, uh, it only took a couple minutes for them to get, actually get the ATM machine out of there and, and loaded. Police say they got a call later that morning from Hot Springs High School where someone had discovered the ATM and an excavator that was used to tear it open behind the baseball field. All the money was gone. Somebody knows, somebody saw something. We just need somebody to come forward with that information, help us put those pieces together. Yeah, this is a brightening. Uh, Donna says for a street that's usually quiet, this was a lot of excitement, but not in a good way. I hope they catch him and I hope they secure this area. All right, just had a viewer saying that they walk six miles a day. That's awesome, happy to hear it. Lots of people asking for an update on Hawaii. Remember, I pay attention to the chat here. We do not have a live picture of Hawaii at this moment. Um, there are some live feeds out there that are showing that the island is continuously under uh, warnings and sirens. We're keeping a close eye on it, and when and if we get a live picture, we will certainly bring it to you. So the final top story I have for you is about a zoo who now has an incubator thanks to a partnership the hospital. Medical technology that once kept premature human babies healthy is now helping zoo animals continue the circle of life. And it's just the start to an unusual collaboration between St. Luke's and Zoo Boise. I wasn't sure if we had anything, but I told her I would look. And St. Luke's did have something, an incubator they could no longer use on human patients, but would work perfectly for animals. We might put a sick animal in here just because uh, sick animals don't thermoregulate very well. Um, we might use it to incubate eggs. Zoo Boise plans to incubate eggs from penguins, birds, and even a few reptiles when needed. So while snakes like the rosy boa won't need to use the incubator, other snakes like the green tree python will use the incubator for their eggs. The most common use for the incubator will be for the penguins during their breeding season. Sometimes penguins and other birds can't regulate their eggs temperatures well enough on their own, so they need a little help. Birds that are not particularly good parents or maybe first time parents, um, you know, that way you have kind of like one in safekeeping that you can control everything. The hospital also donated scales and other monitoring devices that will be adapted for the animal's needs. We're learning more and more that we can use some of the technology that was developed in human medicine for our needs as well. The penguins even gave the hospital a special thank you gift of their own. The penguins walk through paint 
that is water soluble. And the humans involved are more than happy to keep helping these exotic patients. Um, the incubator is something that we use to support our smallest patients um, who are one day going to grow up and go see these animals. So now it gets to help those animals. Jessica Taylor, Fox 9 Now. All right, everybody's taking a live look now at the big board. More news now, just moments away. Good thing for the stock market today, though. Looking good.